Hello everyone, and today I will be attempting to install Gentoo Linux. After being an Arch user for almost three years, I've been reading quite a bit about Gentoo, and I'm really interested by it, so I decided to give it a shot. So yeah, um, I got a capture card specifically for making this video, so let's, let's see, let's see how it goes. That is actually very nice. It starts by asking what key map you want. And, oh, it actually didn't register me pressing that, and I think I timed out. Do, do, do. It auto-scrambled for security. Any Ethernet adapter were detected at boot. Auto-configured. Well, let me actually already restart because I, I didn't select the my um, keyboard layout because I use Colmac instead of QWERTY. So, I was not expecting that, but... That is a really nice feature. Just immediately, as soon as you boot into the live CD, it asks you what what's your keyboard layout and everything. That's really cool. I did not click that fast. Uh, let's just, yeah. I believe a Colmac was a number nine. This time I will make sure to enter it before it times out. Loading Colmac key map, there we go. So I'll be able to actually type without struggling to remember QWERTY on my Colmac keyboard. There we go. Oh, and it, it works. Okay, let's let's see if network is unreachable. That is not good. Okay, uh, net setup. Yes, my network is wired. I have a specific one set fig. Nice. That looks correct. And we have a network. That was simple enough to set it up. I mean, you do want on usually on an Arch ISO, a setup ISO, it just works out the box, but that was simple enough of a setup. I believe now is the time to I, I will just follow along with the wiki on my laptop here. But I did read through it already. I don't need an SSH Damien. I have access to the machine. That's also another thing. The the Gentoo uh, wiki is very, very in-depth. As in, like, it, it covers absolutely everything. In some points, even, like, it covers too many of the details. Like, in the network section, it explains what an IP address is, which is kind of hilarious because if you don't know what an IP address you probably should not be installing Gentoo Linux but it, it it's it's way better than the arch wiki for example the arch wiki even it doesn't properly explain to you what a bootloader even is or like that you need to install one it's like a single line of text that has a hyperlink to go to a different page about installing bootloaders and like you're just supposed to like guess and pick one instead of in Gentoo it miraculously meticulously covers each and every single one in so much detail and it just lets you make the decision it overall gentoo handbook is way better than the arch install guide on the wiki so already gentoo is winning in that department but yeah and so let me just show you on the wiki here it has a section about the internet as in like what is an ip ad internet and ip basics it explains what an IP address is, what IPv4 is, what IPv6 is. It has a whole section about all of that. What a DNS is even. Like this, <laughs> it's, it explains all of the basics. Oh, I need it. I do need to test my DNS to make sure that it works. Yep, that works. Okay, so I can prepare my disks now. I I'm going to do uh, an XFS file system with swap and an EFI system partition. So on my main disk, and then I have two other disks, one an SSD for Steam games and another hard drive for uh, recordings and other data backups. So I will only be messing with my main SSD, which is the one that has Arch Linux installed on it, which is the very first one the very top. I did actually install Arch Linux when I was installing it without a swap partition because I was uh, because I had six I have 64 gigabytes of RAM which I wasn't actually certain that I needed swap if I have that much RAM but apparently I've actually later on learned that it is beneficial to have swap even if you have a larger amount of RAM because it allows you to uh, hibernate and such as well as offload tasks to the swap when they're not being done or actively worked on so it's still a performance gain 
to have a swap even if you have a very large amount of RAM. So yeah, I transferred all my uh, I transferred all my data from my disk already from a live boot CD from uh, Arch yesterday. So does this have CF disk installed by default? Because I do not remember my F disk commands. Really hope it does. It does have it. Okay, that's great. The way I actually have this disk set up is kind of funny. At first, I set up uh, my EFI system partition to have 300 megabytes, which was uh, not enough later on for uh, because I installed a different kernel that was almost a gigabyte in size. Well, a little bit less than a gigabyte, but it was more than 300 megabytes. And therefore, I bricked my system because I just didn't have the storage capacity for to install the kernel and I had to go in and clear that space and then shrink my Linux partition and then add another EFI partition that is, if you look at the start and end sectors, is at the end of the disk instead of the front of the disk, which is not usually you, some, you do sometimes, but it does work. So yeah, um, I've already backed up all my data, not that I have any really important data, so I can just clear that and then... Uh, We'll make the E5 partition. What does it recommend for the E5? One gigabyte. Okay, let's do one gigabyte and then uh, change that to EFI system. Then let's make a. And then, oh yeah, and then swap. How much does it recommend? It says RAM size times two. If I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, that will be a lot. Oh, here it says for hibernation or suspend support, 1.5 times RAM. Hmm. Might as well. I. Usually I just shut down my system, but might as well give hibernation a shot. I have a big disk, so I can just make a 97 gigabyte <laughs> swap, which is huge. Let's see, uh, is there is there a swap type? Yep, Linux swap, and then the rest is will be Linux file system. And now we write all of this. Yes, partition table has been altered. And okay, okay. Now we need to make the actual file systems. This part of the Gen 2 experience is so far the exact same as on Arch Linux. If you're installing Arch Linux manually, that is not using the installer. Oh wait, what am I doing? And then we need. Yep. Now we need. I will make an the XFS. Make a. XFS. I actually never heard of XFS until yesterday when I was reading this part of the handbook, like preparing to install, but I've read about it and it seems really cool. The only major downside is that you cannot shrink it, so uh, yeah, that's, that's why it's better to choose more swap and more EFI, uh, a bigger EFI sector than you may need just because if you do make that mistake you cannot fix it unless you have like you probably can like offload everything to a different drive but that will be like a whole mess and it will take a very long time i believe it's actually three yeah nice okay then let's make the swap p2 and swap on there we go now we have swap enabled now we need to mount it we need to make the Directories, make dear. Why is it lowercase p for appearance? Yes, it is. This is so far, once again, identical to installing Arch. I might just speed this up because not, not much of anything that's interesting is going on. Oh, it doesn't want me to. It doesn't actually want me to mount EFI just yet. I guess I'll do that later. Is that the time? That is the time. Okay. Um, we need to use links. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's that's big. Um, let's go uh, man links. Okay, no manuals installed. Um, okay. I guess I'll just use it then. This is really cool. So it's a browser environment for, it's just a TUI browser. Huh, what do I do here? North America, US. Are these the tarballs? Is it? I think it is. 
above. Which one's the closest? This one is. Mm -hmm. On the mirror list, select a mirror close by. Usually, HTTP mirrors suffice, but other protocol. Da, da, da. Move to the releases. Releases AMD64 auto builds. Okay. Releases AMD64 auto builds. Oh, that's a lot. Next. There are all available stage files are displayed. They might be stored with subdirectory. Select one and press D to download. After the stage file download is complete, it is possible to verify. Da, 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 da. Um. Okay. Yeah. These are the stage three tarballs. So, uh, assuming I want do want system D instead of OpenRC. So I'm assuming this is the one I want. Let's take a look. What does desktop mean? What does that change? I have no clue. It is a desktop though, so I think I just go with desktop. Press D to download, save to file. Do I give it a name or do I just, I'll just leave it blank. Nope, I, I need to give it a name. Save to file, current stage three, D64, desktop system D. Request sent, Q to exit links. There it is. Um, I think I misnamed it. I think it has to have Tarda gz at the end or tarda xz in this case there we go you know we just type in this tar command because i can never remember how tar commands actually work so i'll just copy what it says it does have an explanation that x is for extract p is for preserve permissions v is for verbose output and f, f is for file and then i just give it the file then i need to add x uh x extras include preserves extended attributes in all namespace stored in the archive there's no a here glad i double checked that and then also numeric owner numeric owner file format not recognized maybe i think i downloaded the wrong thing then um let's try that again us i'll just choose this one gen 2 releases d64 auto builds Ew, so I was supposed to go into the... So did I just download a directory? I think I did. This is what I need to download. Yep, that, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I did not know it was a direct... I completely missed the, the slash there. Which explains why it did not want me to... It explains why it wanted me to give it a file name when it already had a file name. At least I thought it did, but... Yeah, there we go. We're back. It's done. Now, if we quit and oh, let's, yeah, let's get rid of that thing that we downloaded that is I believe just an empty folder <laughs> that I named as a, as a tarball. Yes. There we go. That's more like it. And well, now we can actually do this, the, the tar command. Instead of retyping it, I will just do that. Desktop rust okay there we go that was fairly quick this is where so this is where we configure compile options right, so if i check oh there's already a bunch of stuff in here oh my god it comes with nano pre-installed that's so so nice unlike arch actually it probably doesn't come with nano installed it probably just has it in the live cd and actually arch also has it in the live if live cd so this is where we set up our compile options don't know what I need to do here yet, but we have the wiki, so I'll just be reading this. Okay, we need to set this as March equals native. Okay, let me look at the example, which is in... So we do set uh, make options in here as well. Niceness. Increment. What is niceness? Portage niceness provides a default increment to emerges niceness level. This is an increment running emerge in a niced environment will reduce it further default is unset um so i will add make options i do have 64 gigabytes of ram and also a 32 thread cpu therefore technically i should be able to run 32 jobs which is a lot but so i should be able to compile things fairly quickly let me ju it does say please replace four as appropriate for the system minimum between ram divided by two so 64 divided by two is 32 or the minimum is threads which is also 32 so technically i should be able to do 32 jobs actually i do not know what l5 is here it also it says uh j32 and then 
L5. I do not know what L5 is. So L is the load average, which should be lower than the actual job count, slightly above the number of threads returned by NPROC due to it being a damped value. Okay, um, wait, so I think I slightly above, so 34, but let me just double check. 32. Yeah, so 34 should be correct. I guess I'll just set that to 32. I'm not exactly sure how much is slight, but that should be fine. Okay, next page. Installing the Gentoo base system. Yippee. Oh, we get to we get to ch root. Mm, okay. okay, we need to copy over the DNS information. Let me just double check this real quick. Yep. D reference. Oh, so D reference. I think that's a, that's because of the because I installed the XF, XFS dereference because uh, XFS is a, a copy on write system that will ensure that it doesn't just make a simulate or just a link to it. It actually writes a copy. That's cool. Oh, I misspelled copy. Unrecognized dereference. Did I misspell it? Dereference. Yes, there we go. Mounting the necessary file systems. This is just a bunch of commands here that I... Oh, that's nice. They have arch ch root here so that you don't have to mount everything by hand. That's awesome. So it's it's exact same way as on arch. I wonder actually, does the... Does arch chain root come from arch Linux or arch as in architecture? I have no clue. If you know the answer, you should comment down below and let me know. Oh my god, we changed root. How much does it? Okay, I think I do need to run this. Export PS1 equals. From this point, all actions performed are immediately on the new Gentoo Linux environment. Preparing the bootloader. Oh, we finally get to mount it. I actually think it did have a step for mounting it earlier, but. We didn't actually mount it because it told us to make the directory, but now it's telling us to make the directory again because it didn't say to mount it. It did say to make the directory though. So, but it's also saying it now again, I guess it's like an optional step that they just assume a lot of people will miss. Oh wait, no. Configuring portage, installing a Gentoo eBuild repository snapshot from the web. Mm. So it says to, there's a, uh, Emerge web rsync that can be used to download the latest snapshot of the repo, but they don't they recommend it for people who have restrictive firewalls or need to save network bandwidth. Readers who have no network or bandwidth restrictions can happily skip down to the next section. In order to download a source code quickly, it is recommended to select a fast geographically close mirror. I mean I guess I'll I just skip that then. So I do emerge ask one shot it's like the game so yeah i don't think i'm supposed to skip that even though it says to skip it if i have good internet 14 news items need reading there we go also oh, that so this is the for first time i'm using portage we'll take up 732 kilobytes would you like to merge these packages yes it's the first thing i'm building from source completed messages for package ssl fetch this is beta software. The APIs it installed should be considered unstable and are subject to change in these early versions. Okay. So now I do mirror select. I O. Please select your desired mirrors. Oh, there's even Belarus. Wow. Um, does it say if I should select HTTPS ones or rsync ones or HTTP? Huh. to download. I don't think I need. I think I'll just go HTTPS. I think USA. The th yeah the mo this is the most geologically close one oh that yeah, that's it did that work wait no it didn't something went wrong I think I hit enter without selecting anything that's why so I need to press space to select do I choose both rsync and that an HTTP I I assume so and now I hit enter there it is gentle mirrors yep good updating the thing do 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 emerge sync. You can make it quiet, but I want to. I want to see everything. There we go. Now I get to read the news, <laughs> the 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 Gentoo Linux news. E select news. 
list a lot of stuff stall kernel is no longer implicitly installed do, do, do. Mm, all of this is pretty old and outdated that doesn't really matter for me i think read oh it just printed everything oh this is the list one da -ding, da -da -da. doesn't really affect me so i will purge all the news now purge now if i do list is it empty it's empty awesome profile what is this desktop profiles are not exclusively for desktop environment they are also suitable for minimal window window managers like i3 or sway a profile is a building block for any gentoo system not only does it specify default values for use and cf cf flags they're important variables it also locks the system to a certain range of package versions these settings are all maintained by gentoo portage developers you select profile list that's a lot of profiles. Um, I think it's head. Yeah, Linux. I completely forgot. <laughs> system GNOME, System D. Da, da, da. I assume I need. To, wait, there's different versions too. Twenty. What's the difference between twenty-three and seventeen? So, oh, I already have one selected. So when I downloaded that, I already chose a profile, and I do not need to change my profile. It's just telling me. So the wiki is here is talking about what they are, and so these are like what Portage uses to pick which packages you're allowed to use and which ones you're not, and some like default config stuff. No multi. -lib. Do I need multi? -lib? I don't remember when the last. Uh, do, mm, should I go for a no multi? -lib? There's no desktop, no multi-lib system D. There's only... I don't think... I'll, I'll think I'll just keep it as it is. Another question. Do I want binary packages at all for, like, Firefox and such? Or do I want to go entirely the Gen 2 route of compiling absolutely everything from source? It's a great question. I do not know. I haven't actually decided this far. I mean, it can't do any harm to have a few binaries. I can always recompile the source ones later. Adding a binary package host. In host. Okay. Oh, it comes by default already with a... Uh... Okay, so it's time to write my use flags. Okay, let's see what I have so far as my... What are the default use flags? Uh, it's a lot of stuff. Um... That's a lot of stuff that I don't need. At least I think I don't need. Portage honestly sounds like porridge. And each time I type por portage, I think of porridge. Don't know if that's a bug or a feature, but it, it is something. Ooh. The video cards use expand variables should be configured appropriately depending on available GPUs. Setting video cards is not required for a console only install. Below is the example properly. Okay, I'm kind of getting hung up on it says there's a video cards variable here but i'm not sure if i need to set that now or if i set that later because i don't even have a video driver yet installed but i'm uh, so not sure hmm. it does say optional as in for like the whole use flags thing the use the yeah the use flag okay so people on the forums on the on the gen 2 forums are saying that i do not need to add use flags right away unless it's something i'm sure about like for example i know for a fact that i'm not going to be doing a wayland because i am moving away from wayland specifically with this install because I have an NVIDIA GPU. The more you buy, the more you save. The more you buy, the more you save, as we all know. This is like common sense. The more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. That's right, the more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. Okay, I think I'm just gonna skip the use flags bit then for now because I do, I'm not sure exactly. Configure the accept license thing. Um. Skipping that as well. It says optional. Um, at world. Readers who are performing an install. Whoa. Yeah. Readers. Here. Readers who are performing an install Gen 2 speedrun may safely skip at world set updates until after their system has rebooted into the new Gen 2 environment. Readers who are performing a slow run can have orders perform updates for packages, profile, and uh, use flex changes in the pre at the present time. So this is just. So, at world means everything, I guess? So, like, it will update everything. Okay, um, I guess I'll do that. Five very upgrades, one new, and ten reinstalls. What is it going to be doing? Redline, rib, quick, get text, SQLite, lib, kmod, pam, bash, metal, cross abuse, pixman, input, get to, get to, get to, get to, Portage utils curl. Sure. 
probably take a moment. Okay, it's done. We're actually very close. Okay, some software preloaded pain libraries made experience warnings and failures related to missing symbols. Da -da -da. We reboot your system. After world updates, it is important to remove obsolete packages with emerge deep clean referred to. Yep, let's do that. Yep, clean. There we go. I do think this is I do think this is a good stopping point for part one of the video because I have been recording for one hour and 30 minutes. I does that doesn't mean I will stop here and then and then I will just edit this into two separate videos and this is where I end part one and so yeah go part par watch part two it's probably not out yet but as you're watching this but it will be soon so subscribe to see it where I will actually set up an environment with Fluxbox and set up NVIDIA drivers and everything which is actually going to be happening right now for me but that video will be edited later so yeah that's about it for this video um subscribe uh like the video if you enjoyed and yeah i'll see you in part two bye bye